Hi, so we're going to get started on the video tutorial and I'm going to show you how to make this little recipe book that I, I put together. And actually it doesn't have to be a recipe book. I just thought it really uh, fit the paper well. And so I'm going to show you how I made this and it does measure at a six and a half by seven and a half. And we have a magnetic closure on the chipboard cover and then there's a waterfall that'll be on on this side and then over on this side I'm going to show you how to make these two set of pages and on these two set of pages they do accordion let me get a hold at the bottom out so you can actually also and I don't know I won't be able to show you this really when it's sitting up but it will also stand so that you can have your recipes and I'm sorry it's not a better picture as you're working or you can it can just kind of accordion up as you're working so that you can you know see which recipe that you may, might want to grab out and then on the back side this is what I've done of course you can do you know however you like I left this room you know for those newspaper or maybe like you've printed out a recipe and I don't know how many times I'm taking my recipes that I print out and I just kind of fold them. Actually, I stick them in the drawers or I just stick them wherever. But now you can have a place just to stick them. <laughs> kind of, that sounds funny, but you'll be able to stick them right into your little recipe book, fold it over, and you have two sets of these pages. Also, what a wonderful, um, especially wedding shower gift. So let's go ahead. I am going to take this recipe out. It's one I want to actually make this weekend. And then on this, I did not use magnets to, as a closure. It would take an awful lot, and you would probably have to use the large basic gray magnets in order to hold it shut. So I just did the tie closure and magnet front closure. And then on our waterfall, I'm going to show you a really unique way that I use on my waterfalls to, to close it without having to use a magnet on each page. And it's really, it, it holds well, and I've never had any issues with it. So we're going to get started. Let me go ahead, and I, I've done the pre-cutting because I wanted to have everything cut and everything ready to go so that you didn't have to um, wait while I was cutting everything. And so what you're going to need, we're going to start right here. You're going to need two seven by sevens so you're going to cut and that's what this one is these two are two seven by sevens then you're going to cut need to cut eight pieces and you'll be amazed you'll be able to use the leftovers from this paper and that's the waterfall pieces sorry um you'll be able to use some leftovers and so i should have counted what it took maybe four or five sheets of 12 by 12 maybe five apologize i should have counted that then these, you have, you need eight five by sevens, and then you're going to need um, for the waterfalls. They're six by fives, and let me go ahead and put this side. Oh, and then your cover. So on your cover, you're going to want two six and a half by seven and a half pieces of chipboard. Then you want two seven and a half by one and a half for both of the spines. And then you're going to want one seven and a half by two and a half. That will be our closure. So I did um, get all those cut and we'll set those aside. So I will also put these in the description, these measurements, so that you'll be able to cut them. So let me just go ahead and move these off. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these two sheets that are six by seven just put those aside for right now and I'm not going to score everything because I already did oops I did most of my scoring so on your five by sevens and yes I have a new scoreboard if you've watched my other videos I had the white Martha Stewart for years I have now invested in the score pal absolutely love it it just it's a dream to work with 
So on the five inch side, you're going to score at one half. So you will just have that one half there. And actually, I might have to um, go over my score lines just a hair. This Cartabella cardstock is also incredible to work with. It's it's this is the craft uh, cardstock. It's not as orange and harsh as the other craft and it is sturdy. You're going to love the way this Cartabella paper does hold up. I have it for sale in my store at countrycraftcreations.com. Uh, you do have to sometimes go over your score lines with it. It is a, it holds up well, holds up well on these albums. And it is the paper I've been using for my new mini albums that I've been making that are hingeless. And I will have some videos on those. So we're going to go ahead and start with our two pieces that are seven by seven. And it won't matter because this is seven inches wide and seven inches long. What we're going to do, we're going to make our first score at one inch. We're going to make our second score at two inches. And then you will make a third score at one fourth. So go ahead and score at one, two, and two and a quarter. I've already done my other one. And so now I'm done with my scoreboard. I will put that aside. Oh, I forgot. Also on your other sheet. Sorry. So on your six by five inch uh, sheet, on the five inch side, again, go ahead and score at one half. This is the waterfall. So your five by six, you can also just set aside. So let's go ahead and start with our seven by seven, and we're going to start with that one quarter inch on the inside. We're going to score on that quarter inch. I've got some glue there in the way. Now on our one inch, you're going to go ahead and score. Now, I don't do anything yet, and I will show you what we will be doing there. I don't do any of my score taping or gluing till after I get the rest of this put together because I have messed up and put my pages on wrong, and then I've had to change the orientation of the score lines so they go this way instead. So what I've learned is wait to do my score tape till I'm ready to really put it down. So let's go ahead. I've already done... Some, like I said, pre work on this one. Start with that quarter inch. And then we're just going to go ahead and do our one inches. So you should have, a, have two pieces now that look like this. So, what we're going to do is work on, let's put those aside. Let's grab our five by seven sheets. And we're going to start with these. What I like to do, because you're going to want. Um, four on each side. So I'm just going to take out my first four. And I'm going to go ahead and do my creasing. Then, and you might hear some thunder in the background. We have, we're starting to get a huge thunderstorm. Then with my 3 eighths of an inch score tape, so if you're using score tape, you can go ahead and do this step. If you're not using score tape and using a wet adhesive, um, this will only take me a second and we'll move on. And for this, I wouldn't use anything but a really strong wet adhesive or your score tape. It will get a lot of use and you want to make sure your book doesn't come apart. So let's start with our first one. So our first one, we're going to, our hinges to the back side, we're going to take our first um, little page here. You can go ahead and open that so it's not in the way. And like I've, I do in my other videos, I just remove a top edge of my score tape 
and I explain this um, if you watch my other videos, it's easier if you have to remove your page to remove just a small corner than trying to get your whole page taken apart and it helps with getting things straight. Once I have it down and I check it to make sure we're going to be straight on each end, then I go ahead and I start to remove the score tape covering. And then we are pretty good. Sometimes you will have this overhang. Whoops, throw my scissors. I'll be honest with you, it drives me nuts. I just taper it off like so. Now you'll see how your page will close nicely and yet you won't have any interference at all with that first. You're basically gusset. It's a quarter inch gusset. So when your page is down, you're going to want an accordion type of fold. So we have a page up. Now we're going to bring our next page and I'm going to turn this to work towards me so the next one will go on this top. If for some reason you do put your page on um, backwards, put this back here. Don't worry, you will be able to refold it. So don't let that frustrate you or make you stop. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove that score tape keeping our page nice and straight. Now you can see how it's starting to come together. So now when we open it, so the next one is going to go on top so it opens like so. No, I'm wrong. See, I always, I'm telling you, I get turned around here so when it closes in, in and this is going to go on the back side. So with our hinge now here, we're going to once again remove our score tape. And you will be amazed at how fast this comes together. And when my daughter saw this book, she actually fell in love with it more than any other recipe album I gave her. And she doesn't even know how easy it was for me to put together, and I'll never tell her. <laughs> so as you can see now, you're starting to get that accordion. So we have our fourth one. And it's going to fit right on top of this last page. So when when you have it down and your hinge is over to this side, you're going to want this last opening to be like that. So I have to turn this. I hope that doesn't confuse you when I turn it. And for like I said, if for some reason you get this put on in an opposite direction, there's no fear. That's why we're not taping this down until we're ready to put it on our base page. Okay, so now you will be able to have your hinge to the left, and then your. Do you see now how it will pull out, and it will accordion back in. Okay, so there's our first one. Get our second page and our next four, and we're going to do the same thing. I like to fold it so that the raised edge is actually on the inside. Okay, and I'm going to use my 3 8 again. Bring this 
a little more. I don't think I'm staying completely in camera the whole time. And if you are a crafter that does craft fairs or boutiques, this is a great one. You can get this put together in no time. So you can get a bunch of them put together in no time. Okay, I'm not staying in the camera too well, and I apologize. Right. Tomorrow, my craft room is actually going through a transformation. I have talked my husband into building this new craft desk that I found on Pinterest, of course. So I will be tearing apart my room tomorrow. And I was going to film tomorrow, but I thought I'd better get this done tonight or I won't have a video for you um, until next weekend. So let's go ahead with our next one. thing is just to keep that accordion going. And I'm really enjoying these new hingeless albums that I've been putting together. They are my own design, and I will be having more and more of them out on video soon. Not only do they save a little time, they're also wonderful if you are one that don't, you just haven't figured out or you don't like to do the hinges. I don't mind doing the hinges, and I do do them once in a while, but I've loved this even better, and I've made a ton of albums, and I've done a ton of kits, and so far with good review. It doesn't matter, it seems like, with whatever hinge I use, even the new fangled redesigned hinges, I still am not getting that super uh, flat page laying down that I really like. And I used it in my last album, my hingeless album, for my Rare Oddities, and I just love the way the pages lay completely flat. So, back to this one, sorry. So, anyway, here we have two sets now of our pages. And you're going to need one of your uh, six by seven. And you know what? Uh, did I tell you wrong? No, I did not tell you wrong. We're good. Okay, so what you're going to do, and you're going to have some cutting on this. So, and that's going to be kind of your, your, I'll show you when we get there, your choice. Now, on the inside, when we have these two flaps, the reason that I did the double is it, this is like a reinforcement. So this is almost like if you would have had a hinge, it's all, you know, your hinges are folded in half if you do the hidden hinge. So you have that double. Well, that's what this is, but we're not going to use a, a hinge to hook our page to. It's already now attached to our page. So with my 3 8 of an inch or your wet glue, go ahead and put your tape on. And we're going to remove the tape backing and just fold that right on over. And now you have your first page. And as you can see, that is that's good and, and firm. It's not going anywhere. And so we're going to want to also put our score tape on this side. Okay, so on our 
six inch by seven inch sheet, you're going to want to make sure you just just push your hinge up so that you're only going to be attaching. So I'm going to fold that down because you don't want to get this gusset part caught in the wrong spot. So we're going to go ahead and re we're going to be removing our tape, and you're going to adhere it to your base page. So once again, just like I do my pages, I'm just going to remove a portion of the score tape to expose that sticky side. And let's line it up really neatly at that corner. Make sure everything is lying flat. And start removing my score tape backing. A little push down as it goes. Open my page. Make sure that's down. Now you can see your first page taking shape. Now, one thing you might, it's up to you. I put my ribbon around this, this back side and it covered both. You can do it so it's on each page individual or each set of pages individually. If you're doing that, you would want to go ahead and put uh, your ribbon, ribbon down here, but you would need, you're going to need something to adhere it down on the page if that makes sense. Or you can just wrap it so it goes on both pages like I did. And you can play with it and experiment. You might find another super way to do it. And if you do, just let me know. I'd love to see. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing to this one. The set of pages that we just did to our first set of pages. You can adhere this right down to your chipboard after you get your album cover made. If you didn't want to do it this way and you're good at centering, after you put your backing and your your pattern paper down, you could just adhere it straight to the book. I don't like to do that because I don't get things very straight. I like to have my base page to work with. And then I know everything is where it belongs and not crooked. Okay. I'll just repeat the same. And also with this little album, you can add more than one set of these pages if you like. You will just have to make your cover a little bit bigger. For every set of pages, you have to make your cover about a half inch wider. So if you're really good at figuring out those dimensions, you can do that. So we're just going to remove the cover enough to expose a little bit to get started and I'm going to do it at this other end. Make sure you have the right side. You'll see me checking my work more than once because um, if you're an adult that has ADD, you'll understand what I'm saying. I mean, really do, has ADD, you'll understand. You have to check your work more than once. Okay. I'm going to line it up again. Make sure your gusset, you have that score line there. Lay that flat, remove our score tape. And then things are pretty nice and straight. Then we have a nice um, one inch gusset right here where the hinge is lying. And then you also have 
There we go. <laughs> you also have this hinge over here. And then you'll be able to cover that, or you can just cover it with pattern paper and then cover this side. But let me show you. You do have, when you lay this down, you probably have an eighth of an inch um, there. It's up to you if you want to cut it off. You don't have to cut it off. It lays, you know, pretty good once you get your page down. But if it's if it bothers you, just go ahead and trim about an eighth of an inch off. And there is your first set of pages that will go on the left-hand side of our book. And then now if you're going to, if you want to use magnets, you can, but you're going to have to use an awful lot of them, as you can see, and you're going to have to use probably the large magnets to go through all this, this um, thickness. So once again, let me show you. So here's that middle section that we just did right here, and you'll just cover it with a piece of pattern paper, and then you have over here, I did the same thing to match, and then I just matted this side to the right, so that you can use it also, you could put pictures there. And then on the inside here, you won't see the other one because it's going to be covered right here, so it just looks like, wow, it just looks like a page on a hinge, and I just love it. And yet, it's it's going to hold up. It's it's um, I think it's almost just as sturdy. I've made a couple of albums with it, and they're still going strong. So there's that set of pages. Now I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to put the ribbon on. Let me grab one here. I'm trying to think what paper line I'm going to use to decorate mine, um, because whatever paper line you're going to use, of course you want your your ribbon to match. So what I did is I just put my ribbon in the back, and I'm not going to adhere mine down. And I actually just ran a piece of score tape, put my ribbon down, and then just turn it around, and you will then tie it. And you'll have a nice cover. And it will stay stay closed. And then when you are decorating your pages, how I made the pockets, I didn't make my pockets out of the craft paper. I just used the pattern paper. I cut it three inches. And I used one of my punches for the my border punches for across the top and then I just scored it half half and an inch so make sure you cut your pattern paper three inches by one inch longer and a half inch you're gonna want to go three and a half sorry so cut it at three and a half then score it on each side and make your pocket right out of your pattern paper and that way you won't have that extra bulk if you use the cardstock to make your pockets you're gonna have extra bulk. So there's that one. Now we're going to go ahead and take our next six by seven and our waterfall pages. If you are already familiar with making waterfalls, then you're basically a step ahead and you just need to wait and we'll do the cover. So let's go ahead and we're going to just tape just like we did on the other one, and I apologize, I should have had this pretty much done for you. And I'm using a different camera than I usually use Movie Maker, so I can't stop the camera and then pick back up. So you'll have to just join me on this part. And again, if you like to make your waterfalls and just put them directly onto the pattern paper, you can do it that way too. This is just another uh, checkpoint for me to keep my pages straight. And believe it or not, with this album, you don't use a lot of paper. You can get by with using scraps or a leftover uh, paper pad maybe that you were looking for something to do. It really doesn't take a lot of paper. Now before I, I put my waterfall down, I just like to check to make sure 
that I cut my base page straight so that it will lay nice. And I do my waterfall the exact same way. I just remove a corner of my score tape. Line everything up. And I'm going to have a little issue. It looks like a little bit off. I'm just going to trim it there. And probably nobody would have seen that, but um, I know it's there. So I'm going to trim this just a hair. All of my waterfalls look a little bit too long. Apologize, my cutters over on another on my other table. It's so big. Just two more to go. And I'm on my last one. Okay. Easier to cut them now than to try and fix it once they're on the page. Now you're just going to line up the bottom of the, I mean the waterfall at the bottom of that first page. Now that's much better. And move on to our next one. Now on the waterfowl, I'll show you how I also do my magnets so that I don't have to use a magnet on every page. Sometimes I don't like to use a band with a magnet because I want to make sure I have plenty of room for my waterfowl, especially if you're going to be putting like recipes on them. Let's see, this is going to be easier to take the whole thing up. For some reason, I'm off here. Um, the magnets, yeah. Um, I like, I don't want a band that goes across my whole waterfall. Boy, I'm really off on this one for some reason. See how much easier it is to get that little corner off? Let me check this one. That's better. I must have just cut that one crooked. So I'll have to make a new one at the end. Oh, my whole thing is, well, we're going to put them on. And I, I have one of those big professional dolly cutters. So I'm going to be able to cut my whole waterfall, even though it's going to be put together. And I will just be making mine a little bit smaller as all. Well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. And yes, I'm a little OCD when it comes to my album pages. And especially to my waterfalls. I like them to be lined up and I like them to be perfect. I figure we put in so much time putting these together. 
We want them to look super nice, especially with gift giving coming up. This is going to be a wonderful little Christmas gift. Okay, and there's my last one. Now, let me go ahead. Yeah, see, I've got one that's really crazy here, and I'm actually going to try and encourage it to refold. When working with paper, you are the boss, remember. I may not have to cut my waterfall at all. It, it's hard, but you can actually reform your paper and make it do what you want it to do. That's the beauty with paper. And now, I only have one more, so maybe I can fix him too. Let's see. We're almost there. Sorry, at least with seeing mistakes on camera. I just don't want to have to refilm since I'm going to be away from my desk so much tomorrow. It's sometimes better to see the mistakes so you can fix them yourself. And see if you just, it is, it takes some work, but force that paper and make it reform. And now I'm pretty happy with that waterfall. I can live with it. It's just a little off, but I made the paper do what I wanted it to do. So just lift it up, give it some slack, and then start with your bone folder reforming it. And because I worked with it so much, now it's going to be up a little bit. So I'm just going to do a little stretching and folding here now for the magnets. If you're using small magnets, you're probably going to want three of them. I'm going to use the large ones. So I'm going to want two. And I'm going to take, actually it won't matter too much on, on this because what we're going to do is have to use our score tape anyway. So I'm going to put one here. Sometimes this is not the easiest thing to get off. And I'm going to put one just right there. So I'm going to put two on there. They don't have to be straight across from each other. But you will want to secure them. Then I'm going to take two more. See which ones. I've got a magnetic mat here, so let me get a, uh, a negative. So with these two now, I'm going to place them on the back. I don't find its home. Home right there. Now, this is a magnetic pad, so hold it up. So now you've got a, uh, you have a waterfall where you've only used two magnets instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, and it will hold down your whole page. Every single one of them. So, that one now is done, and let's go ahead on the back of this one, and you can use, if you're using your score tape, that is, I'm going to go ahead and put tape on the back, and I won't put this down, down until after I make my cover, and we also mat the inside of our cover. Okay, and set that aside. So we have our two set of pages done. Now we're going to take our chipboard and I want to put score tape 
on mine. I'm going to get it ready for the paper. I do wrap my chipboards, even when I use black. So I don't use black a lot, unless I'm running low. I hate to waste it. So I just put enough score tape. And then on these two. Now, if you make your covers by using uh, Tyvek, go right ahead um, and do that step. I don't use Tyvek. I mean, I have I st once in a while, not very often as a convenience. As for a structural thing, I'm still not convinced, so... Um, like I said, I have not had a mini album fall apart. And I make a lot of them and sell them. And I've never used, I've used Tyvek once and I did do a video after I started playing with it to figure out how it really strengthened the, the album because you can still tear the paper. Yeah, the Tyvek will be there, but it's still damaged. So, like I said, that's just a rant of mine. I apologize. I still haven't found... I, to me, it's just an extra step, so I've left it out. And we will need two sheets of your cardstock. And what I do is I go ahead and cut my cardstock. So this is seven and a half, so I know I want to have an inch at the top and bottom. So I'm going to cut these at 10 inches long. And then we are going to put these together. So using my score tape. I'm just going to put it on both ends. And I can't see that end. There we go. The reason I put it on both is your papers will overlap and you want that extra strength in case it lands in a spot where your album is maybe in a folding area and this way it will be secure. So I'm just going to lay this on top and I'm not going to worry too bad if it's not straight because we will be able to uh, cut some of that off if it if it's not, nobody's going to see it. Okay, so I'm going to start with this piece, which is the, the back cover. Now, you are going to have to have another piece, and it'll be a small one. And you should have one in your scraps. And you know what? My paper, I put it on wrong. So, make sure you've adhered your 12 by 12, not your 7 or your 10 by 12. So don't do what I just did. So as you can see, there's too much space. But it's okay. So I'm going to just lay out my pieces first. And because I did put my paper down wrong, um, I'm going to have to move mine a little bit. I like to have this... this Oh, it's fine. If nothing else, make sure it's in the middle of this seam of your paper. There's a seam right there. So make sure that's in the middle. And your cover will just have to go off. If it's too long on the left-hand side, we'll cut it. Not an issue. But you don't want your spine to hit where the fold is, and it's going to ruin your book. Now because I put my papers together the wrong way, but you're still going to need another piece. So you should have a, a, a leftover in your, in your, from cutting your pages, sorry. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere these two together. You may not have to if you put yours together the right way. I did not. 
but it's okay. And when you wrap your chipboard, it also makes it a lot stronger. Okay. I need to stop talking for a moment. Pay attention. There we go. Now let's do some laying out again. So we want a back cover, but we want to make sure our hinge is right on the middle of our paper fold. Well, no, where we have, I'm sorry, I, I'm losing it tonight, can't talk, where we joined our paper, there we go. Then we want the back, spine, front, and another spine. And again, this is why we just lay it out first. It looks like I'm going to have to just adjust things a little bit. Or I'm going to have another hinge. There we go. Let me see if this is going to work. It's not going to work. So, I apologize. I can't turn my camera off. I'm going to cut some more pieces of paper. Okay, the way I should have adhered them, I went this way. I need to do it this way. Then we'll have plenty of room. Okay. There we go. On my 10 inch side is where I want to put my score tape. And it's really no big loss because that paper can be used. Much better. Now we can do some better laying out. All right, let's start with this cover. Then we're going to have a hinge. No, it's fine. Then we're there we go. Now it's laying perfectly nice. So I only have the one seam now that's going to be on this cover, back cover, and it won't even show because we'll be covering it with paper. And I know now my pages won't pop up. Then we're going to put another spine and then we'll have our flap so see it'll all fit so there's the two and a half all the way down yay okay cool now just set your pieces to the side and whatever you're going to use to space with you will need to be able to space I prefer about a quarter inch space in between so I do use my score tape it makes for a perfect space and it also helps keep the paper where I want it and I'll show you that as we're folding. So I'm going to leave about an inch on the end. where my uh, quarter inch comes in play. I'm going to put it right up next to the chipboard. And then I'm going to remove it. And now I know that I need to have that space in between my next piece of chipboard. Kind of line up next to it and get a good idea of where it belongs. For 
push that down. And again, my score tape, quarter inch. This also will ensure your chip or your cardstock will not crack when it is folding. Go ahead and remove that. And we're going to need this cover. going to line it up, leaving that score tape in the middle. And score tape. And to go a little bit sideways so you can see. And then we're going to use another one of our spines. <coughs> Excuse me, and score tape. Now this is our two, about two and a half inch piece and it's totally up to you if you want. You can also make this hinge that sits next to your cover about an eighth of an inch wider and sometimes it just gives it a nicer layover but with a smaller album like this I don't because it doesn't have a lot of bulk inside so it lays just fine. And we're just going to space it right there. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a bit left over on this side. And I'm just going to cut that off. Again, leave about an inch so that you can have plenty to lay over. And sometimes I get a little crooked down here and it's just fine. It's not going to matter too much. And I'm going to go ahead now with my score tape. So you can see our book's gotten pretty long. So I'm going to just put the score tip all around the edges. I'm going to do the bottom. And I'm going to go across my chipboard. And my sides. So if you're using a wet glue, go ahead and of course don't do this step. You'll have to do that as you're going. Part of my craft room under construction tomorrow, my husband, like I said, building a new table for me which will be um, a lot longer and I'll have more room and hopefully I'll be able to get everything into the videos. Hey, once I get the score tape on, I'll go ahead and I just make sure everything's down. Now, again, you can use um, a special tool. You can um, mark your page. You can just fold this over so it barely meets and that's going to give you a pretty good indication of where to cut um, across. But see where that is? And for me that's not quite enough room so I just go on the other side of that score line and then I cut it off. So if you're not sure yet on cutting the corners um, I would go ahead and fold it and do it that way. If you're comfortable and you're okay, you just cut it. And that's pretty much what I do. 
But until you're really comfortable, I wouldn't because you'll be sad if your book is ruined. Okay, now I take my phone folder and I'm just going to lightly go around the edge. Don't push too hard. And then again, this depends on the cardstock you're using. And I'm using the Cardabella, so I'm not worried. Only cardstock. I have found I can do that. Now I just I like to just loosen my pages so I grab them and I'm just bending against the chipboard. I'm doing a little like pre-folding. Okay. And I'm going to remove all of my backing from the score tape. I just wish I had a, a garbage compactor down here to chew up all the score tape uh, backing before my cat gets into it. She loves to play with it, with these long strings. Okay, now that my tape is all removed, so if you're doing your glue, you can go ahead and do glue and add it to this step. I'm going to go ahead and just work my page over now, over the chipboard. And then using the flat side of a bone folder. Don't ever go along that edge because you will you will go through. You've got two sharp edges. Now for the bottom, I'm just going to basically fold it over and let it adhere to itself and then push it down. Now I'm going to push in on these folds. And if you have, <coughs> excuse me, if you have a pencil or a pen that has this rounded edge, or you have a Cricut or Silhouette and it comes with these tools, this is wonderful. I'm just going to use it and I'm going to help push that in. Now you can see I'm getting a really nice hinge look. And there's the paper is now being grabbed onto the bottom of this score tape. And see how it's sucking it in? So it's not going to come back up and buckle in between my hinges. Because that score tape is holding it down. And I'm not going to get creases, bends. And see this? I'm going to bend this. And I'm going to have a nice fold here. And it's not even going to crack on me. Well, I'm going to cross my fingers there now that I've said that. huh? <laughs> so let's go ahead and do... Do this, and like I said, do not push hard, but do push it down so that it, it's adhered to that score tape. And that's what keeps it from getting caught in there. And have you ever had it wrinkle there, and then you can't close your book, and it's a mess? Oh, this is a pretty good fix. Okay. Now, the reason I do it this way because I have to turn my book to the back of me and let me get it here. I have to turn it this way. So this is facing the front of me. It's just easier for me to push those edges. So those edges, you want to push that corner over the edge of your cardstock. And then fold that down. And I don't know why that is with like that with me, but it's just one of those things. Okay, now I'm going to do this side. And I'm going to just pull that back a little bit. And I'm going to push that down. And there you have your cover. Now, if you look back here now, see how nice these edges are? You have plenty of space, but not too much. And you don't have cracked paper. And if you do this, even with using your Graphic 45, it's one that likes to crack. Um, you won't have the cracking that you would normally. So now we have to add our magnets on this side. 
And I'm going to grab my big, my big ones again. And I'm going to use two of my big ones. If you're using small ones, I would really use four. You probably would want uh, four to go across. You want to make sure your album stays shut. And with these large ones, for some reason, the score tape just likes to come off. That, that comes with it. So I usually just add a strip of score tape. And I'm going to put it about in the corner. Don't put it too close to the top because it will show under your pattern paper. And it looks like we're going to lose the backing once more. And if you want, you can go ahead and measure and line these up. I don't. But what I do after I get them on, then I take the top off and I go ahead and put a piece of score tape there. And that holds them down so that they don't come off once I get the cover over. And we're just going to plan on using score tape here. You can also use your glossy accents. It works well. I just don't like to sit and wait for it to dry. So I'm going to fold now the cover over. I'm going to bring it so, see how they're going to match right there? Make sure it's straight. And where you want it. And then push those magnets down. Now see, when you pull it open, these won't come up. And I'm going to go ahead and then extra security. And when I do put my pattern paper over, then I will take off the backing. So there you have that part. Now for the inside, if you're going to use, if you already know what paper you're going to use, you can go ahead and, and use it on the inside. Since I don't know yet which paper I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and cut... And it looks like I may end up, oh, I think I can use this almost in one strip. Let me see. Nope. I'm going to go ahead and cut my paper about an eighth of an inch shorter is all. I'm going to cut that off. So I can reuse this. And our covers are seven and a half, so it's up to you. You can go a quarter of an inch, or you can go an eighth of an inch around. I'm going to go ahead with an eighth of an inch. Make sure everything looks good. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use my half inch. You don't have to use half inch. You could use a quarter inch. And again, you can use your wet glue. I am over... Um, sometimes over the top with my score tape because I don't want my book to ever come apart. Now I'm going to go three across. And I'm going to show you something really quick before I put this down. See your hinges? If you're using a piece of paper and say it stops, maybe right around here. Don't put don't put this piece here that's going along because you don't want it to get caught in there. It will buckle your paper. So that's why I'm going crossway crosswise. I don't want it to end in one of my folds there. Hope that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to just line this up. Get my head in there a little bit. Now we've pretty much created our folds right here in our band, so we'll just have to do it very softly again. Make sure everything's down. 
once again, go ahead and take, if you have something rounded or an eraser, and I'm not pushing very hard, I just want to make sure that paper is catching on that score tape down there. And I think once you get used to doing this, you'll really like using score tape as your spacer. You'll never have to worry again whether your chipboard is far enough apart because when our chipboard's too close, that's what causes our cracking, the majority of our cracking. I mean, paper might crack a little bit, as you can see, but it's this is so minor. It's something that can those fibers can be sanded off. It's when the paper actually breaks and cracks that you cannot do anything about it. That See, it's gone. It was just the fibers that were on top and cracked. So now we have to do it again. And let's see, this is my little piece that I messed up. I'm going to be able to turn it. Awesome. Get it cut. To where I need it to be. And again, one eight that it looks like I'm going to end up needing three pieces on here, and it's okay with this album. It's really not going to show, but this is going to hit and hinge. And so I'm not happy with that. So we're not going to use it. I went ahead with a 12 inch piece, which is just fine because I'll be using it for the pockets on another album. I'm to make sure everything's straight. So I'm going to make sure everything will line up. Now, I don't want it to overlap too much, I don't want bulk. So I'm just going to slide it up and mark about quarter of an inch overlap. Cut that off. That looks good. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to do the same thing, just take the back. When you are putting this piece down, don't forget on our you put tape across your magnets and you'll want to remove that tape. Now I'm just going to go this long ways with three pieces of score tape. Line up my top and bottom. And again, we have these creases that we need to make. I'm going to help it out a little bit. Oh yeah, make sure you get those magnets down. And I, I like to kind of work around them a little bit to make sure that paper is down good and tight. Okay. I'm going to take my rounded edge. Help it out a little bit. Looks nice. I'm happy with the way it's laying. Like the corners. And I love when I make the covers. I just, I 
it's it feels like such an accomplishment. <laughs> now, one reason too, I didn't put this underneath this cardstock is I like less layers for our magnets to adhere to. This has already got to go through this cardstock, and this will just have to go through your pattern paper. And chances are your pattern paper might be a little thinner unless you're using like die cuts with a view. It'll be a little bit thinner, and that will give you more stay power. So now in your album, you can also change this up just so you know. Um, let me grab my pages. You don't have to put your book part here. You can actually put the book part here and you can put the waterfall here. Totally your choice. Oh, I had, sorry. I have a Starbucks sitting there and it was a little bit of moisture. Um, for this album, because I did my other one, I'm going to go ahead and put, um, oh, I take that back. I am not putting my waterfall down because I need to put it down after I map my page. So after you decide where you want, what side you want your waterfall on, and after you've matted your page, because you do have a little more room around it than your pages, go ahead and remove all this score ta tape backing and just line it up and put it down and then your page is down and you'll see your waterfall will stay nice and shut um, plus I do have to trim a few of my pages so that's a good thing but um, on this side I'm actually going to have to do the same thing I'm going to have to mat the other book let me show you. I used the pattern paper. I lined the inside with the pattern paper so I didn't have this issue, but since I don't know what paper I'm using, um, so I will just mock do it with you. So when you're ready, go ahead and if you're ready, because if you used your pattern paper instead of cardstock, go ahead. Oh, we have to tape the back. You're going to either tape it or you're going to glue it. So mine will be score taped down and after I start decorating my page, I mean my inside book, so now I'll, I'll go ahead and line the inside. And if you did your book this way, it does make for a really strong book. This adds extra, this extra support. But what I'll do is I'll just cut, um, I'll just mat the inside as if it was a page so I probably won't go the the full length of the book I'll just mat each one then I'm going to take my score tape off make sure you have your ribbon put on like I showed you earlier and then you're just going to go ahead and decide where you would like to have this then you're going to glue it take off the back of your score tape and you'll adhere it down now once it's adhered down make sure you open the book and really burnish these um, these pieces that adhered down to the book. So I'd, I would go ahead and burnish these, then I would close my book, and there you go. And then you can go ahead and start matting your pages. I did mine with just the 1 8 around the edge, and you'll just want to mat the front and the backs. And then you'll do the same thing with your waterfall. Go ahead and take off all your, your score tape or glue down and gauge where you'd like to have it just don't get it in your hinges and then you just adhere those two down and then you close your book and you are all ready to decorate so I hope you enjoyed learning all my mistakes <laughs> and uh, make a few of your own they are easy to fix don't let those mistakes scare you and don't hesitate to message me. I'm always on here on the Mini Almond Swap page or on my store page because I this is what I do for a living is I make my books and I'll be glad to help you or walk you through anything if you're having any issues um, or any questions. But have fun. Do you see how quick this was? You can actually have this album done and matted from start to finish in two hours because we just did all this in an hour and 15 minutes even with the mistakes I made so you've got something you can put together if you have a bridal shower a birthday and you need a quick gift um, they're fun to put together they're quick and they're easy and thanks for watching and like I said let me know if you have any questions <laughs>